Hello everyone, it is me, and today I am back with another video. It is going to be all about the characters that I do not regret raising and I wish I would have raised sooner. So I really hope you find something helpful as usual, let me know, and let's get started! So number one on my list is definitely going to be Raiden Shogun. Now there's so many reasons why she is a great character, but the number one thing that I would like to mention is her ability for support and energy recharge. So if you build Raiden with an energy recharge weapon plus energy recharge artifacts, she will gain a lot of particles so your other teammates can get their bursts up. She's intended to be a support character where you use her skill and you swap out to different characters. I'm not going to go into the details of how you would play her. There are other build guides for that. I just like to mention that she is great in terms of damage because her scaling is pretty high. This is a lot of damage in itself and the burst is also lots and lots of damage. If you plan to build Raiden, I really recommend building her burst because it has a lot of potential and the charge attacks do lots of damage too. She can even become a DPS if you prioritize her energy recharge and you plan to build her burst. She's also one of those who gets better with constellations however I don't have constellations but I know some people who do and they do like her for her constellations as well. So my build for her is four piece emblem. I think this is the best suited build and then her goblet is electro damage bonus. Her sands is attack because I couldn't find an energy recharge one. I'm planning to swap this out soon. I think I have an energy recharge somewhere here but I'm currently farming viridescent for sucrose and I've stopped farming emblem. I do have lots of good viridescent artifacts so I might just use an off piece too. Currently this is her energy recharge and she fills up the burst pretty fast. When I'm in Spiral Abyss, I usually have to wait for the burst cooldown. So I believe this is a great amount in terms of my teams and my things that I need. So if you have Raiden, I really recommend building her. Or if her rerun is coming up, please pull for her because she is great for teams. She is great for electro charge, super conduct, and overload. And she has lots of potential. She is a great off-field support because her skill stays on and provides an effect to the characters. So Raiden is going to be my first pick. The second one is my animal boy Kazuha which I got in 2.8 I always use Kazuha no matter the team. Even if it's a team that might not need someone like Kazuha, I still manage to put him in the team just because I really like playing him. He was so much fun, especially when you can dodge enemies with the skill, you can group them up together, and you can watch them sweep up into the air and plunge back down. It is a lot of fun. Other than just being fun to play, Kazuha also provides lots of support abilities. If you build him with 4-piece Viridescent, you can decrease the resistance of the enemies to the element that you're using to fight. Four Piece Viridescent is great for any animal unit. Try building him with Elemental Mastery because he will buff your Elemental Mastery with his burst. He is a great crowd control as well. His Elemental Skill will sweep up the enemies, put them into a little group so you can apply your bursts. If you have Eula, you can have them together, or if you have Raiden, or even having the enemies close to your healing circle, like if you have Diona, it's always great to have someone there to crowd control so you're not running across the entire Spiral Abyss floor. Lastly, you can build him in a lot of different ways, so you can prioritize him with animal damage, or you can do support, even DPS it's possible depending on the weapon you choose, or also an animal battery for your animal DPS. As I said, I'm farming Viridescent, so I plan to replace a few artifacts. So Kazuha is still being built, but he is almost there. So if you missed Kazuha in the past update or didn't get a chance to pull for him, now is a good time to start saving or wait for a rerun because Kazuha is really helpful. But if you do have him, start building him because you will not regret it and Kazuha is so much fun. The next character I believe you should build right away is Bennett. If you've heard a lot of people talking about how good Bennett is, they're not lying. Bennett is a really great character. He is great for healing and buffing and support. He can even be a deep if you decide to build him like that. These are my Bennett stats. I don't need a lot of crit damage because I'm mainly focusing on his buffs. Here's his energy recharge. He's also my pyro battery so I run him with Klee sometimes, but overall his role in Spiral Abyss is to heal my team and also be a battery, and he has a lot of damage too. I prioritize crit rate on him because his elemental skill has a short cooldown and I want it to crit more often than it needs to do lots of damage. If you have Bennett and are confused on how to build him, look up a build guide so that you are building him that helps your team. Here's a side note, if you ever see that you have Bennett Constellation C6, think twice before you activate that constellation because Bennett C6 
makes it so that when you stand in his burst, your attacks will become pyro. And if you have a physical DPS like Eula and you want Bennett to buff Eula's attack, it might not help because Eula's attacks are going to be pyro rather than physical. But if you do have a pyro DPS and are planning to use Bennett in those team comps, then maybe you can activate C6. But just remember, look at your account before you click that activate button. So for Bennett, really prioritize his burst because that's the one that will do the buffing. Try to get his base attack really high and stack a lot of energy recharge because you want to be spamming that burst. You want to be gaining the particles. Right now I use Favonius Sword. The base attack is pretty low, but the energy recharge is mainly what I'm here for. For him, he has two-piece Wanderers and two-piece Crimson. Yes, it's not the four-piece Noblesse or even the two-piece Noblesse, but I think the set is working out really well because I have a great Pyro Damage Bonus Goblet with Energy Recharge, Attack, and Crit Rate. Plus, I have an Energy Recharge stance with a lot of Elemental Mastery and Crit Damage. So if you have Bennett, really I recommend building him. Honestly, Bennett should be a 5 star because of all his potential, so do not underestimate the fact that he is a 4 star and get to building him as soon as possible. The next one I'll go over really briefly and it is Mona. So Mona is similar to Bennett where she buffs your team damage with her burst. You see her in a lot of one-shot team comps and that's what I use for 4. If you're looking for an exploration team where you can go run around and open chests but also they need to be able to fight, Mona is good for that because her sprint can make her go under the ground and it'll make you travel a lot faster. If you have someone like Yelan, then you can go and use her. But overall, what I use Mona for is in many exploration teams because she can do lots of damage with her burst because once the bubble pops, it can sometimes do a lot if you have a lot of crit damage. And also her taunt applies hydro to lots of enemies, so I use her with Kazuha so that it can apply the wet status to enemies and freeze them up. Mona is really good for freeze teams too because you can trap enemies in her burst and also apply Hydro while applying Cryo with a different character. Right now she's C2, yes she is the highest constellation 5 star other than the Traveler that I currently have because I lost the 50-50 and somehow got lucky on standard. Lucky, unlucky. I'm sure. Right now, Mona does not have any set bonuses, and it's actually been running pretty fine with that. She uses the Wood Sith, and her attributes look like this. To be honest, I feel like she crits a lot more than I expect her to, so I'm not too worried about crit rate or the energy recharge either. Her crit damage is at a good spot, in my opinion, and for my use in Spiral Abyss. I don't actually use Mona in Spiral Abyss because of her sprint, and it's kind of annoying. I know, I just explained how her sprint will be cool, but that's exploration, and this is Spiral Abyss. It's not the best in combat, but it is good if you're running around. So I didn't regret building Mona, but it wasn't on my top priority, but after I built her, I was kind of thankful that I did. And the last character on my list is Rosaria, another 4-star. Rosaria was my first DPS and the moment I got her, I just really, really like playing her. So I know polearm attacks can seem very light. For example, Xiang Ling, her attacks just seem very weak and light. It doesn't feel like any damage is coming out. But the difference with Rosaria is that her attacks feel a lot heavier and stronger. And also, because I built her as a physical DPS, it does actually turn out being a lot stronger. Her charge attacks can hit up to 10k, which is not what a lot of other characters can. And I built her in that way, where I can utilize her for physical damage. Rosaria is C6. Yes, that's how many constellations I get. I have her attacks at 9 and then these are come constellations, but they're at the level before crowning because I'm not crowning any characters yet until I really decide on the teams that I want. But I feel like Rosaria is going to be one of them in the long run. So Rosaria can be a great cryo battery if you're running a freeze comp or if you're running her with Eula maybe. She right now has two-piece bloodstained chivalry and a lot of off pieces. That is because I haven't checked up on her build since I've been building so many other characters, but I plan to run her with two-piece bloodstain and two-piece pale flame, or maybe two-piece of a physical damage bonus plus the cryo set. Currently, a cryo damage bonus goblet, and the thing you want to prioritize is crit rate. Now, listen to this, guys. If you are struggling with crit rate on your artifacts, Rosaria can help with that. What you want to do is stack a lot of crit rate on Rosaria, because once you apply your skill or burst, it is going to grant your teammates a portion of Rosaria's crit rate to them, so it will increase your crit rate and the chances of your damage hitting. Rosaria is a great support in that aspect where she can't buff herself, but she can buff her teammates. 
Honestly, I just think Rosaria is a lot of fun to play because I like her teleportation, her moves are pretty cool, and it feels like her spear attacks are a lot stronger than, say, someone like Xiang Ling or any other polearm characters that you might know of. So, those are going to be my characters that I do not regret raising, and I really think that you should raise as well, too. Anyways, I hope you found that helpful, and guess what? 3.1 has been announced, which means we will be getting some new content to explore and a lot more things to do, but that also means I have to catch up on a lot of stuff. Either way, I really hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful rest of your week, and good luck on your pulls in 3.1 or the current patch, and I'll see you all really soon. So keep smiling and best of luck to you all!